we are watching history unfold in real time. There are no other channels to watch. No distractions. We must bear witness. It has been a week since thousands started marching in the streets to protest the killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. And yet already a routine has emerged. Each night, tens of thousands exercise their right to assemble in protest and millions of Americans follow along at home. I do not mean to suggest some crass spectator sport only that there are many who cannot be present for demonstrations in major American cities. There are those who are understandably frightened and furious but don't live in a city with formalized evening protests. There are those who must attend to family at night as well as those who are physically unable to be out in the streets but feel an obligation to this moment. For millions watching the demonstrations unfold on screens following these kaleidoscopic live streams of protests is a way of amplifying the experience of demonstrators or participating in a national moment of unrest. There they watch history in real time as told through an endless torrent of photos, videos, tweets, first-hand accounts from journalists and participants on the ground. Put together, it is a traumatic, often horrifying at times, uplifting and incredibly powerful document of a broken nation in crisis. For years now, no matter where you live, the myriad horrors of the world have been just a convenient swipe or tap away on our phones. Over the past decade, online platforms have been crucial tools for doc documenting police violence and the protests that have unfolded in response. Journalists and onlookers alike cobble together dis disparate streams and posts to build a cohesive picture of a larger event. But the experience, no matter how chaotic or hostile, has always felt so siloed contained to a specific city and particular accounts, tweets about clashes between far-right protesters and anti-fascist protesters would collide in my feed alongside live tweets of a sporting event or dispatches from a campaign trail. No matter how tense, as with television, it felt like you could switch the channel, tune your feed to different accounts and something else would be on. Given that we live our lives online via algorithms tailored to our interests, it's difficult to describe any online experience as universal, but the scale of these protests feels all-encompassing in a way that I've never experienced, a singular collective trauma dominating our national consciousness. There are no other channels to watch, no distractions, we must bear witness to attempt to consume it from the fire hose of Twitter, Instagram, or Snap is dizzying. Instead of reconstructing one event in one city from the perspective of a hundred phones, you have to reconstruct the event on a national level from tens of thousands of posts. Violent police escalations ricochet into feeds, often without context to where they're happening. Some of the footage is so common it starts to blur together, like the images of burning buildings and cars or protesters running from tear gas. Others are uniquely disturbing, like the images of police driving vehicles through crowds. Some of what's depicted is easy to parse, while other clips like one video of a fire that broke out in the basement of his of a historic church near the White House start as report of unclear origin and then are walked back, prompting initial confusion only to be confirmed again. A fire was set in the church's nursery that was put out before causing damage to the rest of the building. It's total chaos, an overwhelming amount of mis 
of information one must vet and process in real time while it's obviously not the same as bearing witness in person it offers a powerful perspective via scale my colleague Shira Ovai described the experience of following the, the protests over the weekend online I will never forget the video of two men and a teenager talking about how powerless they feel I watched online this moment of silence a woman angry at people tagging graffiti on a store, fury directed at a police car in my city and another police vehicle appearing to ram through a crowd also in New York City, she wrote. Uh, I needed to see all of this. We needed to see all of this.